Okay, we're in Intermediate Algebra, Section 6.2, Solving Quadratic Equations Using the Square Root Method. This, uh, these examples, these are the word problems, start on page 227. Okay, so let's read the problem. Example 10, the area of a circle is 305 square centimeters. Find the radius using the square root method. Use 3.1416 as an approximation for pi. Round the final answer to the nearest whole number. All right, if we're gonna be dealing with the area of a circle, we're going to need to start by writing the formula for area of a circle, which I'm hoping that you know already. Area is pi r squared. And then you're gonna take that area and you're gonna to start to substitute in any information that you have from your question here. We know that the area is actually 305, so we can replace A with 305. That's gonna be the first step. We are being given an approximation for pi, 3.1416. I'm gonna caution you, um, I know a lot of students are conditioned to use 3.14 as an approximation for pi. You better read directions because if you do not use what you're given as an approximation for pi, you're gonna get rounding errors at the bottom. So make sure you use 3.1416 if the question dictates that. We do not know the radius, so we're gonna to have to leave r squared in. In fact, that is what we're being asked to find. So once we have substituted in our information, we're going to isolate this r to find out what the radius is. The first step, well, we're gonna to wanna to use a radical to get rid of this square, but the square is not isolated, so we need to divide off this 3.1416. By doing this, it just disappears off the right. On the left, we end up with this crazy thing that you're gonna use uh, a calculator on. I wouldn't do it yet, though. Um, I would leave your calculator work to the end, and then you only have to round one time. So we end up with this fraction here, which I'm gonna rewrite, 305 over 3.1416 equals r squared. Then I'm ready to use a radical to get rid of that square. When I use a radical on this fraction, it does generate the plus minus. However, we are not even gonna consider the negative part because we're talking about a geometric figure which cannot have a radius of a negative number. So you don't even need to worry about this negative and you can actually drop this at this point. Uh, this is where you're gonna to wanna to plug this into your calculator. Uh, if you're using a Texas Instruments, you're gonna put in the radical first. So hit the radical button and then you're going to put in uh, 305 divided by 3.1416. You could use some parentheses around this if you want, but you shouldn't need to. And then you're gonna hit the equals. And then you're going to use the rounding instructions would say round your final answer to the nearest whole number. So don't keep any decimals. The nearest whole number is going to be, uh, this comes out to be 9.85. So the nearest whole number is 10 and the units are centimeters. And of course, we're going to write this in a complete sentence. The radius is about 10 centimeters. Don't forget your units and uh, your sentence form. Okay, example 11 on that same page, 227. The difference of a number and two is squared. The result is three. Find the numbers using the square root method, right? You're gonna need to use this information right here to write an equation. Difference means subtract. So the difference of a number, that's your variable because you don't know what that number is and two, so this is the difference of a number and two, uh, is squared. That doesn't mean just the two is squared, and it doesn't mean just the x is squared, it means the entire difference is squared. So you're going to need some parentheses to put that square on. The result is three, is your equal sign. So we end up with this equation. Uh, since our exponent is isolated here, we can go ahead and put the radical on. We can put the radical on this, this is a case where we are going to want the positives and negatives. We're just talking about numbers here. So make sure you use the positive negative. We end up with x minus 2 equals positive negative square root of 3. Now we need to isolate this x, which of course is going to be by adding 2. 
and we have the same situation that we had in the last section where these are not like terms over here on the right. And it doesn't go in front of the two because that would be multiply and this is an add. So if these are not like terms, you put the two out front, you put the plus minus between, and you put the square root of three after. Um, this is a valid answer even though it's not a real, it's not a rational number. Um, it has a radical in it, it is still a number. And also for this question, there's no question here. This is just a question about numbers, so you don't need a sentence here. This is fine. All right, example 12, still on page 227. Solve using the square root method. The formula d equals 4.9 t squared is used for the distance d in meters that an object falls in t seconds. An object is dropped from the 48-foot Osceola clock tower, which is 14.6 meters. How long does it take the object to hit the ground? <laughs> I must have knocked it off here. All right, so let's write our formula. D, the distance, equals 4.9 t squared, and t stands for time in seconds. Distance is in meters. Object is falling time seconds. What do we know? 48 foot, the distance is a 48 foot Osceola clock tower, which is 14.6 meters. Which one are we going to use? We're going to use 48 feet or we're going to use 14.6 meters. If we go back and check, this formula is written in meters. So we're going to use 14.6 as the distance. We're being asked to find time, so that's what we're going to solve for t here. We're going to need a radical to get rid of this square, but it's not isolated yet. So divide off this 4.9 as the first step. And again, you could plug this into your calculator now, but I always leave my calculator work to the end. Then I only have to round one time. So I have this fraction 14.6 over 4.9 equals t squared. And now I'm ready to get rid of this radical. And I'm going to use a radical on this side too. And don't forget that generates the plus minus sign. However, um, we're looking for time. How long does it take the object to hit the ground? Uh, time can't be negative. So you can disregard the negative part of this answer already because time can't be negative. So when you put this into your calculator, the radical, then your decimal 14.6 divided by 4.9, hit the equal sign, um, you're going to get approximately 1.7. The directions did not tell us how to round this, so I would leave it as uh, 1.7. Um, if you wanted to round it to the nearest whole number, that would be approximately 2 seconds, but you're going to always watch the rounding directions. There are no rounding directions for this question, so either of those answers would be appropriate. In a complete sentence, it will take about 1.7 seconds for the object to hit the ground. All right, that's it for this section. Uh, make sure you practice the homework and bring your questions back to class. I'll see you then.